In the previous video, I have talked about ACE inhibitors, the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. Today, we'll talk about angiotensin 2 receptor blockers, also known as ARBs. They are a famous anti hypertensive medication that are good because they don't cause dry cough and they don't cause angioedema. With that being said, now let's get started. Ren comes from the kidney, converts angiotensinogen from the liver into angiotensin 1. ACE comes from the lung, converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 has two receptors. Angiotensin 2, one receptor and 82. So 81 and 82 are receptors for angiotensin 2. Just because it says 81, it doesn't mean angiotensin 1. No, it means the number one receptor for angiotensin 2. Please, please don't forget that. And the angiotensin 2 does all of this crazy butt stuff. Also, ACE inhibits bradykine formation. Even if it's formed, it's going to degrade it into inactive, ugly, useless metabolite. Okay, now, ACE inhibitors used to inhibit this enzymes. They used to increase bradykine, causing dry cough and angioedema. Not with the angiotensin 2 receptor blockers, which is today's video, the famous ARBs. They are angiotensin 2 receptor blockers. Do they block 81 or 82? They block 81 of the angiotensin 2. Again, 81 of the angiotensin 2. Okay, if normally angiotensin 2 will lead to hypertension and increased sodium reabsorption, hypokalemia and alkalosis, what do you think angiotensin receptor blockers will do? I'll tell you. They will treat hypertension. They will increase natriuresis, which will treat hypertension as well. And they will cause hyperkalemia and acidosis. When should you use angiotensin 2 receptor blockers? Hypertension, CHF, diabetic nephropathy, and vascular disease such as atherosclerosis, atherosclerosis, aortic aneurysm, and Marfan syndrome. We have talked about high molecular weight kinesin leading to bradykine causing all of the stuff. Is this involved in angiotensin receptor blockers case? No, it's not. So let's forget about that. High molecular weight kinesin will be converted into bradykine. When you use ACE inhibitors, you will have lots of bradykine causing dry cough and angioedema. But when you're using angiotensin receptor blocker, forget about this. It's not going to happen. All right, you don't have increased risk of dry cough or angioedema. Doesn't mean like 0% of cases. Of course, there are some cases, but it's not as relevant or as prevalent as using ACE inhibitors. Do you think bradykine is going to be specifically relevant when you use angiotensin receptor blockers? No. Side effects of ACE inhibitors, as we have discussed in the previous video, we have dry cough, hypotension, angioedema, renal impairment, natriuresis, acidosis, and hyperkalemia. They have dry cough, they have angioedema. Fast forward to angiotensin receptor blockers. They will not touch the ACE, so bradykine is normal, it's not increased, you're not gonna have dry cough or angioedema. However, you're still gonna treat your hypertension, it still can damage your kidney, and you will have other symptoms, such as natriuresis, hyperkalemia, metabolic acidosis, and please add orthostatic hypotension as well as dizziness. So side effects of ARBs, we have hypotension, renal impairment, natriuresis, acidosis, hyperkalemia, orthostatic hypotension, dizziness, rash, dyspepsia, abnormal liver function tests, and insomnia. You can make me happy and make grandma happy by getting my 50 hematology cases. You can get them by going to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. These cases are awesome. I mean, come on, guys. Example of angiotensin 2 receptor blockers. They block the AT1 of angiotensin 2. Cool. They include anything that ends in sartan. Lusartan, velsartan, candesartan, erbesartan, azelsartan, all misartan and tell misartan. Who named these things? So, in brief, not boxers. Angiotensin 2 receptor blockers block the ang 81 receptor of angiotensin 2. 81 of angiotensin 2. They do not inhibit ACE. Therefore, they do not inhibit bradykinin breakdown. Therefore, 
there is no dry cough or no angioedema. I don't mean no, I mean like very little and very unlikely. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. You can get all of my notes and all of my cases by going to patreon.com forward slash medicosis and I'll send you my bloody Dropbox links. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.